Can we start with some good news? Cases, deaths, I think it's fair to say plummeting. What's behind that, Andy? Yeah, so we have to look at this in two ways. The um, hospitalizations and the severe and the deaths are going to be now driven by the vaccination program that's going on uh, in, in the U.S. as well as globally. Remember, that's targeting the most vulnerable populations. So we should expect to see the hospitalization and death rates drop faster than the case numbers. Now, the regular case numbers, you know, there's a normal cycling with respiratory viruses that infect during the winter, uh, and that when you know as 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 the temperatures start to warm up a little bit, the conditions for transmission are a little bit less um, ideal, so that you see reduced case numbers. But let's be clear, we're still at a number of cases, particularly here in the U.S., that's much, much too high to be able to be controlled by our standard methods like contact tracing. So we need to keep our efforts up to drop that case number uh, down even lower than it is right now. Andy, you mentioned two factors there. One is just the natural cycle of a respiratory disease, and the other one was just the vaccination rollout as well. When you look at the data, how do you assess which one is which and what's driving what? Well, it's really a question of who's getting vaccinated. And right now, I'll use the U.S. as the example, um, we, we are not immunizing enough of the regular population to see that effect on case numbers. That should change. Um, J&J vaccine here in the U.S. is probably going to be approved today by the FDA. And we're hearing manufacturing of the other vaccines is going up. So in the next month or so, we should see a major change in terms of a switch to vaccinating the general population, which should then lead to an even faster drop in the rate of cases in general. All right. So when can we throw off our masks, go to the theater, hang out with our friends? I mean, when can this be over? That's the uh, uh, $10,000 question, isn't it? Um, $10 I trillion? <laughs> What, but what we're trying to get at is um, the modelers tell us that a population immunization rate close to 70 percent is what's going to get us to a very manageable rate. Now, that's incremental. Um, as we move to higher percentages, we'll have less and less numbers of cases. Um, I still think that given the current rates here in the U.S., we're talking about a late spring, early summer before we can really get to a level of immunity in the population where we can safely consider to really let up all on, on many of the uh, restrictions that we have right now. Well, late spring, early summer, that's actually sooner than a lot of people are saying. I'm wondering from your perspective uh, whether the sort of naysayers out there who are saying stay on with your masks, keep social distancing, even as we do get some um, immunity building up in the community, whether they're worry warts in the, in the people who are like, look, we just need to live again are actually right, that there is a level of immunity that's building that's allowing that to happen more safely. I mean, what's your view on that? I think we have to think of these public health interventions as, again, a multi-layered approach. And the focus is going to be on trying to remove the ones that are putting the greatest, that are having the greatest impact on our economic and social lives. So to be honest, masks should be something that we should just get used to wearing for a while because those are the simplest ones that can be in place that can maintain a level of of reduced transmission. Um, what we really, really want to focus on are things like, you know, schools, on um, getting people back into their workplaces and finding ways to use the vaccination as well as contact tracing and mask wearing to allow us to open up those aspects of the economy so that we can get to some level of normalcy there. So think about this as layered. Professor, let's talk about how we should handle those that have been vaccinated and not from a political standpoint, from a scientific standpoint. I think from a society point of view, there might be a worry about creating a two-tier society in the meantime. From a scientific standpoint, Andy, is there any reason why those that have been vaccinated and have waited several weeks after the second dose can't just go about life as normal? Uh, so far, the signs are, suggest that these vaccines, particularly the Moderna and Pfizer vaccine, which have been the, the most studied here in the U.S., uh, certainly point to having a really strong immunity, and it points to having reduced case numbers as well as that massive drop in the uh, severe cases. So I still think that we want to maintain um, a, a group effort here. Masking is going to be something that is going to be needed. And if you're vaccinated or not vaccinated, masking is going to help us in terms of limiting cases. We also want to stick together on some of these issues. And again, masking is a very easy way to make sure to, that we maintain that feeling that all of us are still in this together and all of us are fighting this uh, pandemic in the best way that we can. So I would imagine that masking is something that whether or not you're vaccinated, you want to make sure to keep that uh, up 
uh, for the next few months. From your standpoint, though, do you think it would encourage vaccine take up when we really need the encouragement to allow those that have been vaccinated to go about life as normal? Yeah, it's a difficult question to get at because, as you mentioned, you don't want to generate a two-tiered society here. But certainly one has to think about as a larger percentage of the population gets vaccinated, uh, those individuals should be able to be doing more things, whether that be going back to school, whether that be going back to work. There should be some benefits from going out and getting your vaccination because you really are going to help reduce the level of transmission of this virus in the community if you get yourself vaccinated. And that's going to have a general population benefit.